In November 2012, Washington State and Colorado voted to legalize small amounts of weed for recreational use. With the world's eyes on Colorado, which just greenlit the first ever regulated, taxed, legal recreational cannabis market, Motherboard headed west to see about the new green rush. In a nondescript industrial corner of town is the grow house for Denver Relief, Colorado's second oldest medical pot dispensary. Hello, Nick. How you doing? How's it going, man? Nice to meet you, Brian. Brian, nice to meet yeah, you. Come on in. So this is our vegetation room at Denver Relief. Uh, all of our propagation and or cuttings take place in here. All of our mothers are in here uh, along the walls on the floor. Uh, so we have 35 different strains in the building right now. Most of our strains in here are gonna be hybrids. They have been crossbred and mixed. There are a few that are, uh, that are pure strains. Uh, for example, we do have Durban Poison, which is a, an original land race strain. It, it hasn't been uh, messed with any, so it's a pure sativa, but there are very few pure sativas and pure indicas that we have in the building. The hybrids are really nice because they sort of can give you the best of both worlds. No matter whether you're smoking it or, or using an edible or, or a pill or a drink, they give you a little bit of functionality, but also give you really good quality medicinal effects as well. So these plants are on day 25 in the flower room of a 70 day cycle. I believe there's about 600 plants in this room right now. Our product, when it's finished, when you lay it on a table, next to most underground product, even somebody that has no history with cannabis can just look at it and see aesthetically that it's a much better quality product. We can pop our heads in here real quick. This is, uh, this is the room we're actually taking down now, so you can sort of see how much larger the, the flowers are on these plants in here. And we'll get a closer look when they're in there trimming as well. These are biodiesel, actually. So this is one of our award-winning strains right here. God damn, yeah. It's so sticky. Biodiesel was actually ranked as one of the top 10 strongest strains that High Time has ever tested at the Cannabis Cup. If we don't think that it's uh, worthy of winning a competition, then usually it gets put on the chopping block and it's back out of the building. Uh, so basically this is uh, one of our smaller trim days. We're taking some of our early strains down that ripen a little bit quicker. So Mike just brought in some lemon diesel plants from the flowering room. He's starting to break them down into smaller, more manageable pieces. But the first step is basically just defanning them. And these fan leaves, they really don't have any essential oils on them. If you look and see the, the sugar-coated trichomes or the essential oils of the plant, you can see yeah, yeah. Uh, some of these smaller sugar leaves we will use in the edible production. But these get shredded, mixed with post-consumer uh, product, and then they're tossed. So we get it down basically about to like that. Now the rest of these smaller leaves are sugar leaves that do have essential oils on them, so we can trim these off, save these for edible, and uh, concentrate production, wax, hash, things of that nature. This is AK-47, which is a really popular strain. So you can see down here, Mike is putting the product on our scale. Uh, we have to weigh everything. We have to weigh uh, the actual bud here. Um, we'll weigh the trim for the edibles and we also weigh the waste product or the stem and the larger fan leaves that, that have no medicinal value. Wow, I, I'm sort of speechless here. This is amazing. Yeah, the top cola on that's probably a good eight or nine inches and down to Brian's hand there is probably uh, 12 inches, I'd say. It'll come as no surprise to hear that for Nick, cannabis isn't just a plant. It's not really the, the evil weed that everybody thinks it is. Uh, we're dying to get it rescheduled because right now universities and, and college campuses aren't even allowed to study or research cannabis, which is pretty ridiculous. They're allowed to study uh, cocaine and all of these other drugs. They can do all these experiments and all this research and development on them. And it's really sad right now because we can't do that with cannabis. And uh, I'm trying not to get too uh, choked up here, but I actually have some good friends that have an autistic son. And 
there's more research coming out all the time about these cannabinoids, the CBD, um, not the tetrahydrocannabinol, but the, the cannabidiol and what it can do for, for kids that have autism or that are having seizures and all of these other things. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just sad. We know that there's medicinal value to cannabis and the government knows damn well that there's medicinal value to cannabis. And the fact that they don't let our universities research it is, uh, it's a crying shame. This is Kayvon, one of the co-owners. When was the first time you smoked marijuana? I was 15 years old. I was in my buddy's basement. Uh, it was, it was interesting. I'm like most kids today, I have uh, attention issues. And uh, it's, it's something that really put me in a place where I could think and get my work done. Um, I graduated high school when I was 16. Been living on my own since I was 16. Graduated college when I was 19. So I saw that marijuana didn't have the, the negative effects on my mind and my body that, that people said it did. And I've always fought for, for people to have that right to, to smoke marijuana if they so choose to. Now, this is our waiting room. Um, pretty typical of uh, medical marijuana centers in Colorado. Um, when we moved in here, there was a lot of uh, break-ins. There were a lot of armed robberies and hostage situations in the industry. So we designed this uh, with the intent of keeping people out. So we have the, the bullet-resistant glass. This whole wall is lined in Kevlar. Uh, the security systems are, are pretty robust. Uh, we kind of have a, a casino-grade uh, DVR system. Anybody who comes in here must have a valid identification, uh, so driver's license or passport, and then their medical marijuana license, which is a, just a little red card. We're going to start to see these different environments that, that marijuana is sold in. There are going to be places that are geared more for professionals that, that prefer discretion, that are willing to pay a higher price for better customer service and a higher quality product. And there's going to be those places that are like the, the shady liquor store on the corner that probably, you know, cater to a less affluent clientele. So this is our sales room. So we'll often bring a patient back here. If it's the first time that they've been back, they'll have uh, filled out an intake sheet that goes over their history with marijuana, um, what they've used, where they think their, their tolerance lies, what products they prefer, and our bud tenders will show them products that we believe may help them the best. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty basic in here. A lot of people come into these shops and they think that it's, it's a scary place, that it does fit that subculture, that there is folks in tie-dyes running around, that it is unprofessional. Um, but, you know, we, when people come in, we have about seven, 800 people that come in here on a fairly regular basis, and we know most of them by name when they come in. And uh, that shines through. Looks like this Durban poison is really popular. <laughs> it is. This is one of the, the few pure sativas that are left in the world. Pretty much everything else on the shelf is a hybrid of some form. Um, but this is one of the few, it's almost pretty much a land race strain from South Africa that hasn't been touched by human um, breeding projects. So it's a pure sativa, which means it almost acts like a cup of coffee. Um, our biodiesel, that's a, what we're really known for. That's what we won uh, 2009 Harvest Cup for, for best medicine in Colorado. And uh, what we were in high times for last year is being the 10th strongest strain in the world. So this is, a, this is one of my favorites. It's our outer space. <laughs> it's beautiful. But it's not all cartoonishly dank bud at the shop. Weed now goes from seed to sale in seemingly countless ways. Some of our edibles that we carry in liquid form, it's a non-carbonated juice. Yeah. And it's a remarkable way in which somebody can consume marijuana. Generally speaking, when somebody has to uh, eat, they have to go through the whole digestive process. Right. And the thing that's unique to liquids is a lot of it is absorbed sublingually, so it goes into the bloodstream straight away. There's foods that are healthier and whatever appeals to a different demographic of a different patient. We have people that are gluten-free and only want to eat things that are organic. So we have this product that's organic, dairy-free, wheat-free, gluten-free, sugar-free, and vegan. And it's made out of almonds, dates, apricots, raisins, agave, nectar, spirulina, cannabis, spices, and hand-rolled in organic coconut. There is an industry to be created. And it's not just people making pot brownies in their kitchen anymore and selling it to a bunch of friends. What you are looking at is our butane concentrations. Butane hash oil, BHO, Earl, dabs, wax, earwax, peanut butter, caviar, spice, 
There's a wide variety of colors. There's a wide variety of textures here. And that's based on the fact that each plant is a little bit different and the oils and the terpenes that go into each plant and the genetics and the makeup of each plant are a little bit different. And the, yeah, it, it's, it's crazy that this has turned into what it has turned into as far as an industry. And to see this kind of uh, rapid advancement in technologies as far as using marijuana for people who have smoked it for thousands of years, to see this kind of new advancement in concentrates is pretty neat to be a part of. Denver Relief is a model for next-generation pot stores.